Hello and welcome back to Project 380. On today's episode, I'm going to be upgrading the coolant system. So the MX-5s are well known for their coolant issues and the first being the standard radiator. The end caps on the standard radiator are plastic and over time they do get brittle and then eventually will just burst. And they're also only 16mm thick. So as you may know from a previous episode I was currently running an aluminium radiator but I wasn't sure what brand it was and I did mess it up a little bit. So I'm going to be replacing that with a Mishimoto 60mm aluminium radiator. So even though it is 60mm thick, it does fit exactly the same as the standard radiator. And it's still got all the supports on the back to put the standard fans. And on the subject of fans, I have gone and upgraded those as well to the Mishimoto fan and shroud kit. Hopefully this is going to allow me to make the most of the radiator by providing a more efficient airflow through the radiator. Because of the shroud, the air can't escape where it wants to, it's going to be directed through the fans, hopefully making the radiator more efficient. And with the added benefit of two fans. Now, before the radiator and the fans go in the car, they first have to be put together. So included in the fan shroud kit is some sticky back foam edging and that goes all the way around this mating face sealing the fan shroud to the radiator making sure no air is escaping between them both. Now this is ready to meet the radiator. Now I'm just going to secure the fan shroud to the radiator with the four bolts and eight washers that are provided in the shroud kit. And then for the four rubber grommets that go between the radiator and the radiator mount. And if anyone knows where I could get four new ones of these from, I'd be greatly appreciative. As I can't seem to find any, and mine are completely perished. Once you've got the radiator in the correct holes down the bottom mountain, you can then go ahead and put the top mountain on. So for the next cooling upgrade, it's going to be the expansion tank. This is my old one, it's now stained, faded, and it doesn't suit my bay anymore. So I am upgrading to the Dayfab aluminium expansion tank. This looks a lot more neater and more modern than the old plastic stained one. This fits exactly how the standard one would. So the bottom barb of the expansion tank goes to the top of the radiator, but the top one just vents to atmosphere. So another common coolant issue of the MX-5 engine is overheating of cylinder 4. Mazda did slightly rectify this in the VVT engine where they blocked off some of the front water jacket holes, forcing more coolant towards cylinder number 4. But what is now commonly done is a coolant reroute. So instead of the coolant coming straight out of the radiator into the front of the engine, you're now going to reroute it from the top of the radiator to the back of the engine, allowing the coolant to flow through the engine and back to the radiator. 
This is in the hope to evenly distribute the heat throughout the engine. So I am using a Skid Nation coolant reroute, but as you may have seen in a previous episode, I have already fitted part of the kit. So we're gonna travel back in time quickly and have a look how that bit went on. So on the back of the engine, on the head, used to be a water outlet that looks a little bit like this, with an outlet for your heater core and threaded hole for a water temperature sensor. This is a little bit different on the 1.6 models, but I'm now gonna be chucking this away as I'm replacing it with something else. So first thing I need to do is I need to remove this stud. I'm just gonna use two nuts to do that. So what goes in its place is a sandwich plate and an end cap. The sandwich plate requires a little bit of assembly first. So looking at the sandwich plate, it comes with the barb that goes off to the heater matrix. It comes with a 1.8 MPT bung where you can put an additional water temperature sensor in and the hole ready for your original water temperature sensor. So if you're not putting in an additional temperature sensor, it's advised to take this bung out and wrap a good amount of PTFE tape on it and put it back in. and then the coolant temperature sensor, they do provide you with a new copper washer. And to go between the sandwich plate and the end cap, you are gonna have to purchase yourself a thermostat. I've purchased a stand 82 degree high flow thermostat. When installing this, it needs to be in the upright position with the flow toggle at the top. Some people have advised me to cut this flow toggle off as it can produce a little airlock. Now all we need to do is make sure our surface is clean and we can bolt it all on. So the old radiator top hose used to come out of the top of the radiator and then straight into the front of the engine here, directly above the water pump, where a majority of the water that has come from the radiator goes straight through the water pump, out through the lower rad hose and up through the radiator again, whereas the coolant reroute goes from the top of the radiator round to the back of the engine, flowing through the engine and then back to the water pump. So it's a little bit of a squeeze, but the reroute pipe needs to be pushed down behind the engine and onto the new water housing. This P-clip that comes in the Skid Nation kit is meant to secure to the standard intake manifold. But as you can see, I've got the Skunk 2 one. I will be custom making a bracket for this in the future. But first I need my throttle body on and my intercooler pipe on to make sure I've got this pipe in the right position first. Then you can connect the reroute hose to the top of the radiator. So now would be the time to put in the lower rad pipe, but I'm gonna have to custom make that as well as my intercooler pipe sit here now and I'm gonna have to slightly reroute it. And as for the fan wires, I'm gonna wire them up in a separate video as I still need to run all the wires inside the engine bay. So that is the cooling system all upgraded, but not quite finished. Obviously, I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of work in the engine bay first, as in fit the intercooler pipes and the anti-roll bars, then I can finish the cooling system off. So that is all for today. If you learned anything, leave it down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.